Happy feast day of St. Lucy. You know, as Catholics living in our time, so many of the traditions, so many of the saints have been forgotten. It was always part of traditional catechesis to know the saints' days, who the saints were, how they died, were they martyrs, were they virgins, were they apostles, were they bishops, all of these things in antiquity, even up until the 1950s, people knew. And when they named their children after saints, they knew of all these beautiful stories. So today we're doing something different. We're going back in time and we're learning about St. Lucy. Here she is on the screen. You can see in her left hand are some eyeballs. She's the patron saint of the blind and tradition is... Her eyes were gouged out. And this is why you'll see in images, she's depicted holding eyeballs or sometimes holding a tray with some eyeballs on them. Here's another picture here. Let's see if this will work. There she is holding her eyeballs on a tray. So we're going to learn about St. Lucy today. Some interesting facts. I will be reading the account of her life out of the Butler's Lives of the Saints, the traditional version. So stay tuned for that. Her name comes from the Latin word lux, meaning light. She's in the Holy Sacrifice, the Mass. If you attend the traditional Latin Mass in the Roman canon, she's one of the many saints listed inside the Roman canon. And I explain that elsewhere if you take my online course on the traditional Latin Mass. And you can do that at NewStThomas.com. Go to NewStThomas.com. I offer a... Well, some people can do it in a, a month or two, but you could take up to six months to a year. A full course on the Roman Rite and the traditional Latin Mass, and I explain, for example, why St. Lucy and other female virgin martyrs are in the canon of the Mass. If you want to learn more, go to NewStThomas.com. Uh, winter enrollment will be ending, so if you want to sign up and take online courses with me, make sure you hurry up and do that and go to NewStThomas.com. So she's in the Mass. She is the patroness of the blind and those with diseases of the eyes for reasons I just explained. She's also the patron of authors. So I have a special love and devotion for St. Lucy. Cutlers, glaziers, laborers, martyrs, peasants, saddlers, salesmen, stained glass workers, the city of Perugia, Italy, and she's also invoked against hemorrhages, dysentery, as I said, diseases of the eye, and throat infection. She died during at the end of the Diocletian persecution. Uh, I explained how there were 10 persecutions, what was that, a, a video or two ago? Which reminds me, if you haven't subscribed, you're missing out on all these things, all these podcasts build on one another. So while you're here, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and then click the bell and you'll be notified of future shows. You can also do that in the bottom right corner of this video, I believe. And also if you like it so far, thumbs up and share it on Facebook and Twitter. She is symbolized by two eyeballs, obviously. Um, she's often holding a palm branch, as you can see on the screen, and that's a symbol. If you're ever looking at a picture of a saint or an icon or a statue, and that saint is holding a palm branch, it signifies that that saint died as a martyr. That saint was killed in odium fidei, in hatred of the faith of Jesus Christ and his Catholic Church. It's a symbol. All right, I think we're back. Uh, the YouTube stream broke, but I think it's back. Uh, just let me know in the, in the comments if it's working. Uh, I don't know where it broke, but I was saying that she's symbolized by a lamp, which signifies her name, Lux, Lucy's light, and also two oxen, which relate to the legend that she was immovable when she was to be taken off to a brothel to be punished. Um, like I said, she died in 303, 304 at the end of the persecution of Diocletian. Uh, I love this period in church history. It is a fascinating pivot where you see the bloodiest, the most horrific persecution of the saints under Diocletian. And then you have this 
pivot, this shift of the conversion of Constantine and the establishment of the eternal city, Rome, as the mother and the teacher of all the faithful and that being recognized by the emperor and by the Roman Empire. It's a, a beautiful thing. Um, this time of year, I'm doing a lot of plugging today. Apologize for that. But this time of year, I'm always telling people about my trilogy, the Sword and Serpent trilogy. The first book is Sword and Serpent. The second one's Tenth Region of the Night. And the third one's Storm of Fire and Blood. This is the story of St. George and many of the saints during this time period, St. Nicholas and others, and Constantine and St. Helena. It's a historical fiction during this time period of what it would have been like. It's highly researched, but it's fiction. It's fun. It's been a, the first book's been a number one bestseller on Amazon three times. It just got uh, number one again uh, last week. So if you want a good book to read at Christmas or a good gift, I recommend my novels, Sword and Serpent. Check it out. I think there might be a link in the description below. Another interesting thing about St. Lucy is this little box here on the screen up in the top right corner. It's the Ember Days rhyme, Lenti Penti Cruci Lucy. As traditional Catholics, we try to observe the Ember Days. The Ember Days were instituted in the early church at each of the four seasons to remind the faithful and the clergy, but especially the faithful, to pray and fast for holy priests. Just as the four seasons are associated with harvests and planting, so the church took that idea from the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few, to pray for laborers, and the laborers are the priests. So at the four seasons, we fast and pray on the Friday, I'm sorry, the Wednesday, the Friday, and the Saturday, these are called the four ember days. And the way you remember when they are is the little rhyme right here. Lenti, penti, cruci, lucy. So the first ember week of the year is the week after the beginning of Lent. The next ember is the week after Pentecost. So you have Lenti and Penti. They rhyme. Isn't that fun? The next, the fall ember day is the week after the, uh, the feast of the Holy Cross, September 14th. Cruci, the cross, and then Lucy. You see, Cruci and Lucy, they rhyme. And of course, today, the day I'm recording this, December 13th, is the Feast of St. Lucy, which means our Ember Day for the winter is coming up this Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday. So take this and brand it into your mind, tattoo it into your head, not literally, Lenti Penti Cruci Lucy, and you'll always remember the Ember Days. So when it's the Feast of St. Lucy, as it is today, you know we are about to embark into the Ember Days. Everybody got it? I always have all these weird things, these funny things on how to memorize. For example, if you've seen my Ten Commandments trick on how to remember the Ten Commandments, um, the Beatitudes, I have one for that. Um, stay tuned for more rhymes and tricks to remember your traditional Catholic facts. Lenti Penti, Cruci Lucy. Enough of that. We're going to now learn about the life of St. Lucy from Butler's Lives of the Saint. This is the version that I like and recommend, Butler's Lives of the father, Fathers, Martyrs, and Other Saints. I believe this is included if you search on my website, taylormarshall.com, for the Happy Meal, which is another cheesy thing that I've done. It is the combo meal, the happy meal of all the traditional books and resources that I recommend for Catholics and for Catholic families. I call it the happy meal. If you just search that Taylor Marshall happy meal, you'll see the books I recommend. And I believe the set is listed in there. All right, here is the story of St. Lucy. So get a hot cup of tea or Maybe a coffee, something to, to settle down during this winter season. And I will use my voice to tell the story of St. Lucy, the Virgin and Martyr. Now, this account is abridged from the Acts of St. Lucy, and it's older than St. Aldhelm, Ed Aldhelm, who quoted them in the 7th century. That is the 6th hundreds. All right, is everybody sitting by their fireplace? They have their favorite warm socks on and a 
cup of tea? Good. The glorious virgin and martyr Saint Lucy, one of the brightest ornaments of the Church of Sicily, was born of honorable and wealthy parents in the city of Syracuse and educated from her cradle in faith of Christ. She lost her father in her infancy, but Eutychia, her mother, took singular care to furnish her with tender and sublime sentiments of piety and religion. By the early impressions which Lucy received and the strong influence of divine grace, Lucy discovered no disposition but toward virtue and was yet very young when she offered to God the flower of her virginity. This vow, however, she kept a secret, and her mother, who was a stranger to it, pressed her to marry a young gentleman who was a pagan. The saint sought occasions to hinder this design from taking effect, and her mother was visited with a long and troublesome flux of blood, under which she labored four years without finding any remedy by recourse to physicians. At length, she was persuaded by her daughter to go to Katana and offer up her prayers to God for relief at the tomb of St. Agatha. St. Lucy accompanied her thither, and their prayers were successful. Hereupon, our saint disclosed to her mother her desire of devoting herself to God in a state of perpetual virginity and bestowing her fortune on the poor, and Eutychia, in gratitude, left her at full liberty to pursue her pious inclinations. The young nobleman with whom the mother had treated about marrying her came to understand this by the sale of her jewels and goods and the distribution of the price among the poor, and in his rage accused her before the governor, Pascasius, as a Christian, the persecution of Diocletian then raging with utmost fury. The judge commanded the Holy Virgin to be exposed to prostitution in a brothel house. But God rendered her immovable so that the guards were not able to carry her thither. He also made her an overmatch for the cruelty of the persecutors in overcoming fire and other torments. After a long and glorious combat, she died in prison of the wound she had received about the year 304. She was honored at Rome in the 6th century among the most illustrious virgins and martyrs whose triumphs the Church celebrates, as appears in the Sacramentary of St. Gregory the Great, Bede, and others. Her festival was kept in England till the change of religion, as a holy day of second rank, in which no work but tillage or the like was allowed. Her body remained at Syracuse for many years, but was at length translated to Italy, and thence by the authority of the Emperor Otto I to Metz, as Sigebert of Glembours relates. It is there exposed to public veneration in a rich chapel of St. Vincent's Church. A portion of her relics was carried to Constantinople and brought thence to Venice, where it is kept with singular veneration. St. Lucy is often painted with the balls of her eyes laid in a dish. Perhaps her eyes were defaced or plucked out, though her present acts make no mention of such circumstance. In many places her intercession is particularly implored for distempers of the eyes. It is a matter of greatest consequence what ideas are stamped upon the ductile minds of children, what sentiments are impressed on their hearts, and to what habits they are first formed. Let them be inured to little denials, both in their will and senses, and learn that pleasures which gratify the senses must be guarded against, and used with great fear and moderation, for by them the taste is debauched, in the constitution of the soul broken and spoiled much more fatally than that of the body can be by means contrary to its health. There are few 
Lucy's nowadays among Christian ladies. Because sensuality, pride, and vanity are instilled into their minds by the false maxims and pernicious example of those whom they first converse. Alas, unless a constant watchfulness and restraint both produce and strengthen good habits, the inclinations of our souls lean of their own accord towards corruption. And here endeth the lesson on St. Lucy from Butler's Lives of the Saints. I'll just make a few observations before praying with you. And that is, St. Lucy, as a young girl, consecrated, as the text says, the flower of her virginity to Jesus Christ. This seems to have been very common in the early church. And it didn't require, as we think of it nowadays, as going to become a novice and living in a convent. and It was something that was made in secret between the soul of the Virgin and Christ himself wasn't even necessarily a public act. As we saw here, Lucy's mother, Eutychia, didn't even know about it until the miracle happened at the tomb of St. Agatha. The other thing we see here is that early Christians were already praying to saints. They go to the tomb of St. Agatha to pray. You see, relics and prayers to the saints and devotion to the saints are already happening Pre-Constantine, you know, a lot of Protestants and evangelicals will say, well, all that mumbo-jumbo superstition happened because of Constantine. He brought in all this paganism to Christianity. Look, this is pre-Constantine, and they're already praying to saints and going to the tombs of saints to pray by the relics of these martyrs. In this case, a virgin martyr, St. Agatha. So, that's pretty cool as well. The other thing is the persecution of women in these ancient times. Men would often be sold into slavery. They would be forced to become gladiators. If they were educated, they would become tutors. But women, usually their punishment was to be sold into slavery and to be sent, as in the case here, to sent into a brothel. So in a way they were slaves, but they were um, enslaved for this most shameful occupation. And in this case, by a miracle, she was unmovable. And in one of the accounts, I mentioned that she's symbolized by two oxen. They hitch up two oxen to try to move her, and she's so heavy by a miracle, they can't even take her to the brothel. Not even two oxen can take her to the brothel. But it's a reminder of how cruel the ancient Roman world was. Let's see what else here. Yeah, the other interesting thing is that the accounts don't depict her eyes being gouged out, but yet that seems to be the universal tradition. It might have to do with the fact that light, Lux, her name Lucy means light, light enters the body through the eyes. And so there's this connection between light, the eyes, etc. And of course, as we get into this month of December, it gets darker, it gets colder, and so St. Lucy is sort of this, she is a, a prelude to Christmas. And in some countries, they would have on the Feast of St. Lucy, the girls would dress up in white gowns to symbolize Lucy as a martyr. And I believe, I might have this wrong, I'm not quite sure what country this is, um, but the girls would wear uh, garlands on their head and they would have candle lights on their head, symbolizing the light, the lux, lucis, of Saint Lucy. A beautiful tradition. So I would encourage you to maybe tell part of this story to your children or, or share it. It's important that we, we know these stories, we know the art, we know why Saint Lucy is holding the eyeballs, why she's holding a palm, because she's a martyr. And also we know that she holds a special place in the Roman canon of the Mass, and that she also holds a place in the church calendar, as I showed up here. Lenti, Penti, Cruci, Lucy. She, signif she signals the coming of the Ember Week. 
It's in Sweden. Thank you for everyone in the comments. It's in Sweden where they have the, the young girls dressed in white with the garlands on their head, with the candles uh, on the girls. I've seen some pictures of it. Uh, Joanna Metcalf says, I think in Denmark too. Good. You know, I have some Swedish blood, some Finnish blood. I've got that, got that in me. Maybe I need to get my kids tonight, get my daughters to wear some candles on their head. Sounds a little dangerous. Yes, yeah, Sweden was once Catholic. We think of Sweden today as being Lutheran or secular, but remember, Sweden was Catholic and England was Catholic and Scotland was Catholic and, you know, Europe was Catholic until Martin Luther came and broke it all apart with his heresy and his lies and all that. That's why I don't understand why Francis thinks Luther was a good guy and a reformer. Ireland was once Catholic too. Sadly, yes. All right, well, let's close up with a prayer. We will do um, we'll do the Hail Mary together. Let's cue up the Latin for you. Oremus nomini patris et fidi et spiritus sancti. Amen. Ave Maria, gratia plena, Dominus tecum. Benedicta tu in mulieribus et benedictus fructus ventris tui, Jesus. Sancta Maria, Mater Dei, or pro nobis peccatoribus, nunc et or mortis nostre. Amen. Gloria Patri, et Filio, et Spiritui Sancto, sicut erat in principio, et nunc et semper, et in secula seculorum. Amen. Sancta Lucia, ora pro nobis, in nomine Patris, et Filii, et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Well, this was fun. I'm glad we got to talk about a good saint. We're not talking about difficult things happening. We're talking about, well, I guess martyrdom is difficult, but lovely things happening in the church. And, you know, sometimes when we get discouraged about what's going on in the church in our own day, as I say, we need to lift our eyes, St. Lucy, lift our eyes off of this horizon here on planet Earth up to the horizon in heaven where we see our Lord Jesus Christ, the Blessed Virgin Mary, Ever-Virgin Theotokos. We see St. Joseph, St. John the Baptist, and all the angels and saints, including St. Lucy, surrounding us, cheering for us, praying for us, and encouraging us. That is the church victorious. That is the church triumphant. That is where we are called to be. And there will be infiltrators here on earth. There will be bad lay people, bad priests, bad bishops, yes, even bad popes. But those in heaven have won the crown of glory. So let us strive to enter into heaven, the narrow gate, and to be with everyone. St. Lucy, pray for us. Thanks for everybody for watching today. It was kind of nice to do just a wholesome show. Wholesome show. Do you like these? Should I do more Saints Days and more Saints and Stories? Let me know. Leave a comment below. Leave a comment in the uh, live chat. And uh, y'all continue to have a happy and holy Advent. If you need a good book, a good gift... Get my book, Sword and Serpent. It's all about this time period. It's very rich. It's very inspiring. It will encourage you in your Catholic faith. And um, remember, our Lord Jesus Christ is the <clears throat> light of the world and the salt of the earth. So go out there and be salty. God bless. Godspeed. St. Lucy and all the saints, pray for us.